Me too, as always. We're starting, I'm going to pray. Of course, we say there's none like you, Lord. It's because of you we are made righteousness. We couldn't do it ourselves. And we need you. And you answer our call. And you send your son. So we can have righteousness. So we can be with you, Lord. I thank you for that. As I'm here, Lord, I ask you to increase and I decrease. But not just here, Lord. Every day, I decrease. And you increase in my life. I become more like you. And if you agree as well with that, say, yes, Lord, let me decrease and you increase in my life. Holy Spirit, flow here. Work through us. Let us receive your words in the stays and stays. Because through your words, as we remember it, in the stays, we're not sin against you. I thank you for your son, the precious gift. I thank you for your words. Because your words guides us. Without your words, we'd be lost. Thank you. Come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. I guess she's predicting my voice would be, I don't know, we'll see. We'll start with the comics. Wilbur W. checked in the pearly gates. Wish you were here. Yeah, if I had to send a text message when I'm in heaven, I checked in the pearly gates in heaven. Wish you were here. No way I'm going to let this truck driver pass by me. Hello? Hello? If you understand what happened, she didn't beat the truck. Some of us try to beat the truck. Don't do that. Tell me, Adam, how in the world I'm number five on your speed dial list? <laughs> Cat, dog, you know, that'd be first way. Slaw. I would let the condo there. If you could guess the theme of today, topics what? Phone? Phones. Have you upgraded yet? Have you? We talk about phones. How do you have the newest phone? I have last year's model, the X. Some of you have the A, A plus, that's last year's model. In the Apple wall, that's 100 years ago. Yeah. Some of you have the 7, 6, 5. Some of you have the 6, 5, 4, 3. Anyone have the 1? I have the one. If it works, I remember how to turn it on. Oh. It works. I found yesterday, I remember I had it, I saved it. It's like a brick. It's heavy. I tested it. It still works. Pretty cool. I wanted to see if I could download some of the newest app. I couldn't. Why not? It hasn't been upgraded. But it's upgraded to the max of the software, but it's not compatible. It didn't work. It's all. My daughters are looking at it. It's small. <laughs> the seven. The five. 
I guess I'm an Apple phone hoarder. I save it. My wife has the newest phone. If she uses it, it's compatible with every software available for Apple. All the apps is compatible. But when I tried with the one, I couldn't. Okay. It didn't work. That thing is ancient. I think it came out 10 years ago, right? That's why it's called the X. 10. That came out 10 years ago. It doesn't work very well with, for today. But if I connected it with the phone, I'd probably be able to call or text. It still connects with the Wi-Fi, it works, but it doesn't work with everything. It misses things. Some of the apps I want to download on there, I can. Okay. You got the point, right? Does that work for now? Now, for the phone to work, what do you need? What do you need? New information, upgrade, OS action. For me to make phone calls or text or search the internet, what do I need for my phone to work? Clue. A provider, phone service, right. I just put the two biggest competitors, the best ones. Verizon is number one on the list. The best connection, less drop calls. I have no idea what drop calls is because I don't use my phone. Is it like this? You call and you drop your phone? Is that what it is? No? I guess I get that cheesy. Woo! Mom, mom, yes, they hung up on my mom. I'm sorry, mom, they hung up on me. ATT is number two. Number three is T Mobile. Number four is Sprint. I know, imagine that. But Sprint and T Mobile are going to combine soon. They've been talking about that for one year. So once that happens, it becomes much better and improved. More location work. I'm looking for that because I have Sprint. The death plan. But for my phone to work, your phone, I think I could confidently say you all have phones, right? 99.8% I'll say, that, except the kids. So I'm sure you have your phone. You have to sign up for a provider for it to work. Mm -hmm. To connect with God. Hey, don't call me. Someone just FaceTime me. That's funny. It works. Because I have a, a provider. If I didn't have a provider spread, he couldn't FaceTime me. That'd be impossible. Unless I connected to Wi-Fi. That's another thing. You know, God, he gave you a connection. Yeah. Through Jesus Christ, the blood that paid the price for you all to connect. There's no other way you could connect. We have different options. We have Verizon, ACC, Sprint, T-Mobile, Cricket, all those other providers I've seen. You could connect to any of them and get service, right? But for God, you set up one provider, that's it. Jesus Christ. He gave it all to you so you could connect. He didn't leave you out like, ah, oh, drop calls. No, I'm sorry. I sent Jesus for you. Now just sign up to connect. It was simple as that. We see it again. He would connect. And you want the best connection to Jesus Christ. And we also have the Holy Spirit. The flow. The Holy Spirit helps you. Connects as well. It guides you. So we have the best provider, Jesus Christ. And it seems the Holy Spirit will work through us. He doesn't leave us hanging. Stuck. 
So I go on. Can you imagine what it would be like if the Bible times have bones? What do you think it would look like? Online, I found some joke they have. Anyone have Instagram? 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 Yeah. If Noah had it, Noah keeps on posting his boat DIY, do it yourself project. Posting it. Yeah. And he posts a caption that said, I'm getting instructions from the Lord. People look, come and join me. How people liked it? Seven people. <laughs> yeah. You get that? Jonah tweeted, I'm going deep sea fishing. He posted it three days ago. He hasn't been heard from yet. Jesus just showed up on a donkey. Why didn't he use Uber? The wise man, the order gets from Amazon Prime, is on the way. If Jesus was on Facebook, he would start with 12 followers. Unfortunately, one disappeared later. Judas loved PayPal. He was always asking for 30 pieces of silver. Moses, he wished he had was. He would not be lost in the wilderness for 40 years if he had that. Traveling forever. Have you heard from Paul? He checked in prison again. If you know Paul's in prison often, he checked in prison. And then he updated his status. He's not Saul anymore. It's Paul now. Woo. Abraham, he updated his status as well. He's going on the son and father trip with Isaac. <laughs> He's full of faith. I think I'll just stop there. Oh, one more. Facebook marketplace with a selfie. Joseph's brother just posted the selling him on the marketplace now. Yeah, so you can I'm a little bit concerned about King David like Bathsheba's profile on that. Now we're going on. So have you imagined if they had phones before then? It'd be very interesting. Like we're very interesting right now. We depend on the Holy Spirit to guide us. It helps us. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with, with groanings that cannot express their words. The light bothered me back then. Do you know how to turn off the light back then? Thank you. Sometimes we don't know what to say. We need help. The Holy Spirit is there to help you to guide you. It lights up your path. There's been times when I'm talking with God. I need help. So the Holy Spirit will help me to connect, talk to God. Sometimes we're lost at words, what to say. We're struggling. But we have a helper, the Holy Spirit that will help us. Mm. Yeah. One thing is what? We need to remain plugged in with God. I hope you're plugged in with God. Sometimes you're, boom. How many of you are on your phones all the time? Something like, yeah, guilty. 
There's a, a feature on the phone. You could check your weekly phone usage. 14 hours, not bad. Some of you are like 58 hours. Woo! Wait a minute, 58 hours? What are you doing during work? No. Yeah. Your phones will tell you how much you use them. You're connected to your phone often. Are you the same with God? Are you connected with God the same way? Yeah, I'm using the Bible app. Let's check how many hours you use the Bible app. It'll tell you 0.08. That's not enough. It's important. Is your service on? You have boom, boom for God. If God calls you, is it going to be a drop call? If you get a text from God, are you going to answer it right away? I hope you're connected with God when you're ready, when he calls you. Yeah, you ready? No. We're going to get connected with God. There's a verse that talks about being connected with God. Did you know that? We find it in John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch, branch of mine that does not produce fruit. He prunes the branches that do not have fruit. Why? Because they'll make more when he cuts them. Yeah. If you know about gardening, you know when you cut, it helps grow. I don't have a green thumb. Some of you know, oh yeah, you cut. I only know because of YouTube. It helps me a lot. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me. I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it's cut off from the vine. You cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Those who remain in me, I will produce much fruit. Apart from me, you can't do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is a useless branch and withers. Those branches thrown in the fire to be burned. But if you remain in me, my words remain in you. You may ask anything you want, it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings much joy to the Father. Now, if there's a tree, and they have branches, if you cut it off, what's going to happen to the branch? It's going to die, right? Is fruit going to grow from it? Of course not. When you get a tree and you uproot it, you throw it, it's got nowhere to grow. It will die. We must remain in Him to grow. In the tree, the flowers are the perfect sample of how to grow with God. It needs the sun. S U N. Change it to S O N. The sun. It needs that. It needs the water. Jesus is living water. It flows. It changes you. We need them. We need Jesus. Without it, we're not going to grow. We're going to wither. Well, we need the sun. We need the water. And we need the ground to root in. Root in God. Because of Jesus, we can root in Him and grow. Yeah. We have to remain in Him. Continue. We have our bad times. Sometimes we feel like we want to stop growing in Him. When you stop reading the Word of God, when you stop praying, you get weak. Your power. Nobody likes to be at zero percent on their phone, right? You charge it, right? 
How have you charged your phones this morning? Well, last night. Yeah. Neither plugged in all night. Not really good. But if it works for you, it's fine. Yeah. But when you charge your phone, you want it 100%, right? We have a habit of doing that. It's natural for us. Plug it in. Overnight or in the morning, it's ready. Some of you get up at 5 just to plug it in, go back to bed, wake up two hours later at 7, then it's all fully 100% charged. And you wake up, but if you wake up at that 3%, what happens? You get panicked, right? You get worried. I'm not going to be able to text my mommy this morning. Do you do the same thing with your spiritual level? Do you plug in with God? You get up in the morning, you have the word of God. And it charges. 5%, 10%, 20%, 30%. Like a phone, it takes time to recharge. Can you plug in your phone and it automatically go boop to 100%? No. It takes time. Some of your phones take an hour or two hours to fill up. How much time are you charging with God every day? I'm just going to read my Bible for five minutes. Five percent. How much time are you spending with God? How much are you recharging with God? Think about that. Your phones, they get charged. Are you charging yourself? Sometimes we need to recharge ourselves more. Five percent, five minutes is not good enough. We sung a song, you are worthy of my prey, you are worthy of my time. Are you giving him your time? So much just give five minutes, ten minutes of the day. Are you thinking about God? Are you praying? Yes, more about it. Jesus is our example. He shows us how to talk with God. How do we start? The Lord's Prayer, you know that, right? Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Pray like the a Heavenly Father. May your name be holy. And on you pray. You begin by talking with Him. Our Father. Your name is holy. It's a precious name. It's a name worthy to talk with. It's a name worthy more than five minutes of your time in your life. Talk with him to grow. Your connection with God, it gets upgraded the more you spend with him. He sets upgrades, updates, when you connect and you accept it, you download. You go stronger. I get updates on my phone almost every two weeks, pretty much. Why do we get updates for? Sometimes there's a virus or a bug in there. Sometimes we get bugs and virus. Okay, clean it out. Our baggage last week. Sometimes they come in, throw it out. In a connection and relationship with God. He wants a stronger connection with you. He gives you the strongest connection. We have to grab it and use it. The plug. You have to plug it in, right? You have to walk and plug it in, plug it in. You have to. It takes action. It takes action. You have to walk to God, plug in with Him. With a car, you have to drive to a gas station, put it in, and fill it up. You have to be willing to go to God. If you're not going to God, you're not going to get filled. You have to go to Him. 
His name is precious. We call out to him. He's worth it all. Because I know I couldn't do nothing without him. My life is a mess without him. I struggle without him. But with him, he gets me straight. He recharges me. I have to go to him. In him, my weakness is made strong. Famous verse, James chapter 4, verse 8. Come close to God, and God will make it close to you. We have to go to him. Take action. Go to him. He is here for you all. Connection. Just plug into him. You have to be willing to accept him. To be recharged. Now the problem. Is it God that's not giving us a strong connection? No. He gives it. The problem is where our end. Sometimes we don't connect with him. Sometimes we don't connect with him long enough. Okay, I'm good. I'm busy with my life. I got children to raise. I got work. I got dishes to clean. Well, maybe not that. Yeah, I need to do that anyways. I push myself. Yeah. When you connect with God, you hear Him better. You feel Him better. When you let the Holy Spirit work in you, it's amazing what He does for you. Yeah. He guides you. And you see things more clearly. The mistakes you could have done, it helps them forward. You need to connect with them. The more connection with them, the easier it is to connect with them. The easier it is to talk with them. With my wife, I'm connected with her. I can go up to her, I can talk to her about anything, and I feel very comfortable. I can tell her my struggles. I can tell her my joy. I just connect with her easily. Because I'm close to her. I'm plugged with her. But if it's another person, it's a little bit, I talk. I have a connection with some people here. I connect. But how connected are you? The more you're connected, the easier it is to talk, right? The more you trust. With God, connect. It's easier just to talk and tell him everything. Yeah. Hi, Lord. Precious name. Connect with you. It's easy. Another problem we're always doing. Later, later, later. On my laptop, it's a new software, OS X. Mojave something. I haven't even updated it for almost a month and a half. Pops up every day. It's annoying. Would you like to update? Remind me. In an hour. Two hours. Or tomorrow. Please stop reminding me but it doesn't have that option. God, come on. Let's update. I want to talk with you. I want you to grow with me. Later, later, later. That's the, pro- that's the problem we do. He calls you. He wants you to grow with him. That's how much he cares about you. He wants to grow with you. Here you go. The plug. Come on. Recharge with me. Talk with me. I'm here. Later. Stop. We just stop doing that. Click install now. Install now. 
The more you read God's words, the stronger you are. Temptation, you come. You have the word of God. You resist it because you know the truth. You straighten to say no. When you read the word of God, word by word, you learn and you grow. You see joy. The person becomes stronger. I guarantee you, if you read the word of God every day, you will grow stronger. The devil will come and you punch him with the word of God and he'll run. I can't punch the devil with Joey's word. I'm weak. But the word of God is powerful. The Holy Spirit is powerful. I am connected with Jesus Christ. The blood. Get out of here. A child growing up needs the food, needs nourishment to teach them. Without education, without food, a child will not grow up good, not grow up healthy. They need that. Same with us. We're growing. We need food. The Lord's Prayer. Give us your daily bread. Remember that? We need it daily. We eat three times a day. Me, ten times a day probably with all the snacks I eat. Are you doing that with God? Three times a day plus snacks? You'll be fat spiritually. That's what you want. To be fat spiritually. Physically, no, I don't want to be fat. But spiritually, you want to be fat. And the only way you can be fat is by doing what? Eating the daily bread, reading the Word of God, praying, staying connected with God. I just have three things. Number one, I just said it pray, pray. Talking directly with God. You get it from Him. Lord, where do you want me to work? Where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to move? What shall I do today? I'm struggling with this situation. What do I do? I pray, Lord, give me strength, whatever I'm going to face today. Let me be like you. Sometimes we be like ourselves. Sometimes it's not a good thing. Let me be like you. What would Jesus do? Prayer, the world's greatest wireless connection. And the best you can do. Now, is prayer important? Oh yeah, when you read the word of God, you see Jesus, the Son of God. He did it. He did it. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. One of these days, Jesus went to the mountain to pray and spent the night praying to God. The night. The night is not short, right? A long time. Jesus prayed, prayed, talked with God. That's why he was full of power. He talked with God. You want to be full of power? You want to be able to resist sin? Pray with God. Talk with him. Five minutes. Not going to do it. If I sent my daughter to school, you're going to school for five minutes. <laughs> boop, boop. What's she going to learn? Maybe a few sentences, one or two math problems. In 12 years, 12th grade, I'm saying 12th grade, 
every day for five minutes. Well, she's going to look like a 12th grade. Probably still a kindergarten level with five minutes. She goes to school. She's smart. She learns. There's so much information in the mind because she learns. Because she goes to school. Now she's five minutes. Same if you go to God in five minutes. You're going to be a kindergarten level with God when you've been in church for 15 years. Sometimes when you meet people in church, they've been going all their life. And all they know is John 3.16. That's all. Do you go out? Do you help people? No. Five minutes. That's all. That's what it's like. Not good. Because when you get to heaven, what's going to happen? Let's test your works. Don't think works gets you in heaven. No, it doesn't. It's your faith in Jesus Christ and the blood that washes you. I'm just saying, God's going to say, what have you done? Let's put it through the fire. Let's see if you have any gems or jewelry for your crown. If it's just wood and hay, it's going to burn up. God gives you all skill. I talked about that. You have skill. Do you use them? Have you gone out and shared the gospel? Is your light shining? Jesus' light. Is it shining? Have you brought people to church? Have you invited people to church? Have you talked about God with your family? What have you done for God? Have you done nothing? Five minutes. Basically, that's what it is. The more you grow, you'll be hungry to do more in the church. You'll be hungry to serve God. Not here only, but out there. When people come in, when they meet you wherever you work, whatever you do, do you have a smile? Do you give your best service? Five minutes, you're not going to give your best. Connect with God. Your light shine. Luke chapter 22, verse 39, verse 40. Jesus went out as usual. Usual. I mean, normal. Usual. On the Mount of Olives. And his disciples followed him. On reaching there, he said, Pray so you will not fall into temptation. Have a problem with temptation? What do you do? Pray. Jesus said it. Pray. He will not fall into temptation. Temptation walks. Talk to the hand. Bye bye. I had Jesus in my heart. Yeah, we all get tempted. Resist or not? Five minutes of prayer time with God. You're going to struggle resisting that thing, whatever you struggle with. Pray, warrior. I spent hours with God. Temptation, boop, bye-bye. Easy. Because I have him. I have a connection with him. Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. You can pray for anything if you have faith and you will receive it. Need something? Pray. Communicate with God. And he says you'll receive it. Now, the second thing to stay connected with God, to embrace Jesus. Today's culture, they hate Jesus. They don't like what he stands for. Living holy, that's a long time ago. Today, nah. Holy living, that's crazy. That's the world. I've had a play with sin. Yeah. 
if people embrace Jesus, the world will be so much better. There's so much hatred here. You watch the news, there's so much hatred. Even saying the name of Jesus, people get angry. No, you can't talk about that. No. Mm -hmm. People don't like to hear the name of Jesus because they'd rather stay in their sins. But we receive him and we embrace him and continue embracing him. Now, how do we embrace Jesus? John chapter 14, verse 21. Those who accept my commandment and obey them are the ones who love me. Because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them, I will reveal myself to each one of them. Love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. That's a commandment. Love your neighbors as yourself. We have the Ten Commandment. Don't kill, don't lie, don't steal. Honor God. Don't take his name in vain. It's not just about cussing, using his name in the Bible, but also wasting his name. Oh my gosh! You know, people waste his name. I said gosh, but some people use his name, God. His name is precious. Honor your name. Commandment. Shall I have sex before marriage? What's the word of God say? No. Shall I steal? No. Shall I lust another person? No. Can I lie? A little white lie. My wife comes up, this is just making me look fat. No. A white lie. What do I say? Let's go to the gym. No. I love my wife. If she says, do I look pretty? I say yes. And that's true. That's a fact. But the command is the word of God. How will you know what God wants? Reading it. Praying. Letting the Holy Spirit guide you. Don't lie. Even a little lie. A little lie gets you in trouble. Here's a good example. When I married my wife, she made rice. It was whole, awful. Uh, terrible. Don't worry, my wife's not going to be hurt. It's fine. I had a choice. I said, it's delicious. The best rice ever, like my grandma. My grandma, she made awesome rice. Delicious. And I had two choices. I say it was delicious. Or, uh, now everybody say it was delicious. I've been married for almost, let's see, 17 years now. Close, I think. I would be eating that rice every day. But I told her, I don't like it. But it's all right, you can prove. She tried. She didn't give up. She tried. She made different rice. It got better, got better. Finally, I would say five years ago, it's the best rice, like my grandma's. Because I didn't lie, I got the best rice. See, there's consequences in little lies. So think about it. First John chapter 2, verse 6. Whoever claims to live in it must do as Jesus does. We need to do what he did. The Bible shows you what Jesus did. Who he is. Third thing. No compromise. There's no compromise with God. 
if you compromise, half and half with God, your connection, boom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move in with my boyfriend. Oh, I'm going to marry someone who's not a Christian. He's an atheist. Compromise. I'm still going to church, Lord, right? I can marry that person who's an atheist. Does not believe in God? You're compromising with God. God said, do not yoke yourself with unbelievers. Don't compromise possession. If you have to steal to get something, you're wrong. Your career, sometimes you get an offer in the job. But if God says, no, you need to stay here. I just got a job offer in Minnesota. But God says, you just stay here. But they're paying $50,000 more. I'll go over there, I'll preach in a church over there somewhere in the snow. It's fine. But if God says, no, you're trying to come, but, but, but. Relationships, sinful pursuits. I'm just going to drink two beers, maybe three, maybe four, five. Don't compromise. Don't play with the world. Don't do that. You play with the world, what's going to happen? You're going to get burned. You make mistakes. You need to mess up. We can't do that with God. When you play with the world, your connection with God becomes weak. Your battery. You can't do that. I'm going to give you one good example. Daniel. You can find it on chapter 6. Daniel did not compromise with God. King Darius was the leader at that time. He loved Daniel. Everything he did prospered. And he was trusted. He loved him. He made him a leader of the nation right there. And he blessed the nation in everything he did. But there's some people who are jealous of that. And they knew they had nothing against him. Because he lived right with God. He followed God's commandment. They wanted to trick him. So they went to Darius and said, King, let no one worship anything else except you, the king. No other God, nothing else. But the king wasn't thinking. He signed it, yeah, for sure. We'll kill those who don't worship you alone. And it got out. Daniel heard it. I'm in the top position. I have a good home. I have money. He had everything he needed. But every day I pray to God three times. They catch me. They'll kill me. I'll wait until I'm out of town or something. No. He refused to compromise. He got on his knee and prayed to God. He refused to pray to the king. He went ahead and he was caught. He refused to compromise. He had to be punished. Don't want the lion's den. Any other story what happened? The lions didn't eat him. And the king saw that God was powerful. He said, we need to have to worship the only one God because he saw. He refused to compromise. Uh, play with the world, play with God. He refused to. And God saved him. Sometimes we're worried over there. Should I do this? Trust in God. He will help you. If you can shut the lion's mouth, you know lions are hungry. 
If you read more later, when they threw those other guys in there, they ate them really fast. They were hungry. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Don't compromise with God. I'm going to play with sin. I love you, but I like this. Don't do that. Don't play with sin. Amen. The lions are doing the Daniel fast. That's why I didn't eat him. Now the thing is, stay connected with God if you want to grow. He sends upgrades, upgrades. You click yes. Don't click later. Let's grow with God. No. Read it. Pray. Don't compromise. Don't play with the world back and forth. No. Embrace Jesus. Follow him. By following him, you have to read the word of God. Know who he is. You come to church, I can preach about Jesus. I can. And I do. But it's not enough. You're getting a little bit. There are 52 weeks of the year. An hour. So you're getting 52 hours. I wish I calculated how many hours in the whole year. 365 days a year times 24. Figure that out. 240, 240, 240, 600. I could figure about 700. 700 hours maybe. So only 52 hours. So I'm only here for 40 minutes to I'm, I've been preaching for 50 minutes so far. In a little bit of time, you're getting some information. What did you say? How many hours? 8,760? No. 8,400. 8,400 hours a year. Roughly. 52 hours for me when I preach. Plus Bible study, 100. That's five minutes from that time. Same concept. If you're not going home and reading the Word of God, if you're not praying during the week, your connection will be weak. You have to continue reading the Word of God. Continue praying, fellowshipping, and you will grow. Your connection will be strong. Better than Verizon. No drop call. Boom, 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 boom. Talk about that. But the thing is, you have to agree to the terms and conditions. Now, I'm telling you today, do you accept the terms and conditions to be upgraded with God, to be comparable with God? So if you agree to accept, to grow with him, say, yes, I accept, agree to update. Say, yes, click it. Cool. Yes. Download, upgrade it, stronger with God. Continue communicating with Him. Read the Word of God. Don't stop. Embrace Him. Don't compromise and pray every day. That's just five minute prayer. And He will grow stronger. Yeah. You'll be amazed how strong you are. When temptations happen, when problems happen, you face them. You have ups and downs. The stronger you are with God, the easier the path is. Yeah. So keep growing. Don't stop. Keep connected with Him. I'm going to close and pray right now. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your connection. Thank you for the fight of the Jesus blood, the bridge to connect with you. Thank you, Lord. You have blessed us so much, even though we deserve it. You gave it to every person in the world. But we, we shall have plug in to connect with you. Help us to grow. 
Help us to hear you better. Help us to resist temptation. And we have to take action and grow with you, Lord. So say, I love you, Lord. I thank you. And I receive the terms and the condition to connect with you every day. Thank you, Jesus' name. Bless everyone here. Amen. What's your team? Close this down.